Okay, perfect. Uh, so I guess we can start. Uh, topic of our lesson today, uh, first of all, let me just say that uh, we're going to do this mentorship and it's an open mentorship, so you're very welcome to ask questions. Uh, there's a lot of things you can or may ask and uh, let's talk about everything that you feel like uh, we should talk about. But let me just start with something. I want to bring up a topic that I think is very, very important for, um, for each and every trader. Uh, it has to do with quantity management. Um, and I'm going to talk about a trade that I had today with uh, Tesla. Um, it was uh, one of my successful trades, actually, although I had three trades in Tesla uh, this morning and uh, two of them failed. That's the part I want to talk about. How do you take your first trade? Let's let's you know start with how did I pick Tesla? And then what do you do with your second trade? And then what do you do with your th third trade? quantity wise that's the topic of my lesson today so feel free to ask uh, any questions you like and uh, let's uh, let's start and uh, talk about uh, um, what I believe is a very important uh, uh, issue so first you know I, I come I, I walk into my computer pre-market time usually I do it at around one hour I start doing it at around one hour before the trading session starts I, I usually do it uh, anywhere between 30 minutes before the market is open and uh, uh, one hour before the market opens so, so, somewhere in this time frame that's what I do the first thing I do is take a look at the S&P 500 now take a look at the S&P 500 let me uh, put this window a little bit uh, higher here so you can all see it uh, more clearly so here's the S&P 500 you can see several months back now what's the first thing you see when you look at the S&P 500 and a very clear uptrend a very very clear uptrend we are trending higher now of course I could uh, take it uh, uh, farther and we could uh, this does not even this does not include uh, the corona times now you can see the corona times where the corona crisis started uh, last year so look at this huge uh, uh, move down and then we're seeing the, the recent uh, move uh, hold on a second uh, let's take a look uh, concentrate here more on uh, 2021 and you know somewhere let's start somewhere at uh, 2020 and 2021 we're seeing a very 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 clear uptrend now I always take a look at the S&P 500 before I start trading because I, I need to understand where we came from and where we're likely to continue now although I, I guess I feel like most of you that the market is too extended uh, we shouldn't be here I mean these are corona times market's supposed to be down we're not supposed to be going for new highs and we did reach a new all-time high today so although that's the common feeling of all of us traders we, 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 we need to ignore it. We need to ignore it because it only takes one look at the market. We never fight the market. We never fight the market. It only takes one look at the market to see what a very clear and beautiful uptrend we have. Now, you take a look at the S&P 500. You see this beautiful uptrend. The, you, you just don't fight the market. You expect the market to continue higher. You look at uh, the pre-market gap and you see that the S&P is starting at around 0.5%. Right now, it's up 0.85%. So we are trending higher today and it looks like we will continue moving higher. Uh, and again, if I go to the fundamentals here, who cares about what I think? Who cares about the fact that I think that the market should come down? Who cares about you guys thinking, some of you thinking that the market should come down? The fact is more people are at home, more people have nothing to do, more people are opening, uh, I don't know, Robin Hood accounts, uh, getting ma money from Uncle Sam, putting it in the market. They don't know how to short, they only know how to buy, they're buying. So I guess, you know, if I, if I need to find an excuse why the market's moving higher and keeps moving higher, it's because more and more people are involved in uh, investing and in trading and in everything that has to do with that. So if you take a look at the S&P 500, we're moving to new highs and we do not argue. So you look at that and then you look for opportunities so I, I usually look for um, my top uh, 20 list now if you take a look at uh, my top 20 list uh, I'm taking a look at uh, the biggest losers the biggest gainers and uh, the uh, most active stocks for some reason I, I can only see here uh, one of the lists anyway so I, I what I do pre-market time I start looking at the losers losers of the New York Stock Exchange so I'm just going to click all of them and all of the users of the Nasdaq and I'm going to be looking for the biggest gap downs so 
If the fact is today when we open up, uh, the, I mean pre-market time, when the market was gaping up, you, I do not expect to find an, a lot of you, a lot of uh, stocks that are gaping uh, down. Well, I did find uh, MVIS. Was it? I'll, I'll take a look later. Hold on a second. Let me see what it's doing now. MVIS. What is? Yeah, yeah, it's down 17 percent. So that's the only one I found today. I didn't even bother to take a look at the news. Uh, stock is down 17%. Pre-market time, it was at 10%. This was a beautiful opportunity for a short. Uh, yes, of course, here it is. You see, in the list of the big losers, you can see it right over here. So just one click of that button, and all of, and, and immediately you can see the chart. This is a daily chart of MVIS. And so I just, you know, prepare pre-market picks. And, but again, that's the only... Uh, pre-market pick I, I saw today, the only one I posted pre-market time in our trading room and it's the only one that looked promising and it did do a great job. I, I Personally, I did not find a good entry point. I know Scott took it for a short side. So it worked out very well. It was a beautiful gap and go trade. Um, but sadly, I did not enjoy it myself. I was too busy with other stocks today. Well, I did concentrate on the stocks that are that did move up. Why? Because the market was gaping up today. S&P started with 0.5%. Nasdaq zero started 0.8%, I believe. Now it's 1.5% up. So I did concentrate on the uh, long side. Now, if you take a look at the long side, you will find somewhere... No, actually, I did not find it on the long side. That's a good example, in fact. If you take a look at the longs, at, at the gainers, uh, I'm looking for Tesla here. I can't find it. You see, I can't find Tesla. So Tesla is not on that list. But if you look at uh, the active stock, pre-market time active stock, you will find Tesla. You will also find a few more candidates that we traded today like MU and other stocks. You can find MVAS as well here. So on the active side, you don't know if it's moving up or down, but of course you can just click them and, uh, and watch. So pre-market time, Tesla was, in, uh, was gaping up. Now, um, so I, I start my day by looking at the S&P 500, always the S&P 500. I'm also looking at the Nasdaq 100. Nasdaq 100. So I'm, 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 I'm getting the feeling of what is about to happen today. What should I concentrate? You know me. I prefer going for the short side, right? I, I prefer shorts. Shorts work better than longs. You know, fear is <laughs> working much better than greed. And stocks are coming down 85% faster uh, than they're moving up. So that means that uh, your chance to have a, a short winner is better than to have a long winner. Anyway, the market is moving up. I should concentrate on stocks that are moving higher. I'm looking for long opportunities. I posted a few of them. One of them was Tesla. I think I posted five or six long opportunities. Anyway, one of them was Tesla because it was on the list. That's it. Now, I do have my own list as well. Stocks that recently moved up, stocks that recently I liked daily. I couldn't really find anything interesting there today. So I concentrated on the top 20 list. And uh, if you, so again, if you're wondering how I'm looking for my stock, that's it. It starts there. So I'm, the first thing I do is I'm taking a look at the S&P 500 and I'm looking at the beautiful upside gap. Uh, the fact that we're moving to um, a new all-time high. We started at a new all-time high. And then I'm looking for uh, my pick. So I'm looking at Tesla. And again, that's the Tesla's daily. Now, if you take a good look at this red candle, you can see that I did think Tesla should move up today. Why? Several reasons. First, of course, the market was moving higher. Second, uh, a lot of people are noticing Tesla. It's a big company. You want to trade stocks that a lot of people are noticing because, you know, as technical traders, uh, it doesn't help us to be the only one who's looking, who are looking at a stock and thinking, well, it should move higher. That nobody cares about us unless you, nobody cares about this trade unless you have a lot of people thinking the same way as you do. You do. I mean, the whole idea of technical analysis is a self-fulfilling prophecy, really, because there's a lot of people who think that the stock should move up. Therefore, you will have people helping you. So you look for a stock that you think should move up, and I'm Taking a look at the S&P, I'm getting the feeling that the market should move up. Now I'm looking at Tesla. Tesla is gaping up. So what happened recently in Tesla? Well, Tesla was under a lot of pressure. It did come down. But then look at what happened. It popped up again, moved up. Now I have a higher low. You see, I've got a higher low than this one. Recently, lower lows, lower highs. Now I have a higher low. And it seems to me like Tesla 
is about to break over this recent high here and move higher. I still believe so. I mean, technically, Tesla right now, to me, it looks like, I mean, possibly a good swing trade. I don't know. To me, it looks like Tesla is likely to move higher. But anyway, it started even better than what it is right now because Tesla's now is down. But it started with a gap up today. So I look at the daily pre-market time and I figure, well, Tesla should be noticed by a lot of people. Um, I personally like the trading Tesla. My success rate in Tesla is, I dare, if, I, if, I, if I dare say, around 90%, probably 80% at least. Anyway, I do have a high success rate in Tesla. So I'm looking at Tesla pre-market time and I'm saying, wow, market's moving higher. Tesla has like a turning point here. A lot of people are likely to watch it. Let's try and find an intraday entry in Tesla. So it all starts with looking at the daily. Now I'm moving to the intraday. I'm moving to the intraday. These are one minute candles. Now I'm showing you the S&P in one minute candles here. Um, I do not, I do not uh, trade the S look at the S&P in one minute candles. I always look at five minute candles, which you should too, because institutional traders are only watching five minute candles. But you know, just to have them one in front of the other, I'm just using the S&P with one minute candles. Now I do start by trading with one minute candles because you know it's the first few minutes so that's the best I can see when I'm trading a stock at the first 10 20 minutes or so I rather trade it with one minute candles and but I, I keep watching the S&P in five minute candles so I'm, I'm watching the S&P starting with a significant gap uh, Nasdaq as well starting with a, with a gap and I'm watching the S&P first trying to move lower you see the first uh, red candle over here and then if you take a look at Tesla, you can see that Tesla also started by moving lower. Th that's okay because it, it, it started with a big gap up. It's likely to have some kind of a uh, downside pressure. The S&P is also likely to have some kind of a downside pressure. In fact, I was expecting a little bit more than that. But then the S&P uh, stops start moving higher. Now you look at Tesla stopping after the S&P stopped. You know, the S&P is our crystal ball. Whatever happens in the S&P is likely to happen in most of the stocks. I mean, 60% of the movement of the stock intraday comes from the S&P 500. That's because the S&P is followed by the institutional traders. Institutional traders are the ones who are having 80% uh, of the volume in Tesla and all the other stocks, over 3,000 stocks which, who, who are over $10 and over 1 million shares a day, volume a day, they have around 80% volume of institutional traders. So us, we don't, we're, we're just a small part of it. So now I am starting to see the S&P starting to move higher. And I'm saying, well, Tesla should move with the S&P. The pressure during the first few minutes is fine, no problem, but then it's likely to move higher. I took my first trade right over here. I went long with Tesla. So, I, you know, it was a failing trade. That was my first trade in Tesla. I had to move out. Sadly, Tesla moved under the lows, took me out and then moved higher. You see, sometimes it will have supported the lows. I had no choice but, but moving out of Tesla when it moved out under the lows. That was the right thing to do. It was also the right thing to move in. I failed, but I did not do anything wrong technically. I was looking at the market pre-market time. I figured the market should go up. I wasn't wrong about that. I was looking at Tesla pre-market time. I figured out, well, Tesla is up 0. Point, uh, actually, I don't know what. It was much higher, in fact. So Tesla was up. And I figured out Tesla should move higher, it came down with the market a little bit. It was a bit late to respond to the market. The market did move to a new high. You would expect Tesla to move to a new high too. You look for a reversal, you go long. You know, we're doing this kind of trades in our trading room. I don't know how many times a day we're doing that. Most of our trades will be successful. Tesla failed. Do I feel I've done something wrong? No, definitely I do not feel so. Anyway, I was looking for my second trade in Tesla. Not necessarily in Tesla. I was looking for a lot of stocks, different stocks. Now you can see that uh, the S&P kept to the highs, came down a little bit. At that point, I was a little bit suspicious about what the S&P is going to do. But then came a green candle and I felt like, well, it's likely that the S&P would move higher. It did so, but a little bit later. And look at what happened at the same time in Tesla. Tesla failed to continue lower, started reversing. Sometime during that upside move, I decided I should move back to Tesla. And I took the same quantity that I moved in at the first time. 
I don't want to talk about quantity, but let's just say you trade 400 shares and that's your, I would say 400 shares for the average trader, that's too much. Let's say you trade 200 shares and you took your first trade with 200 shares and the second one, I believe, should have been traded with the same quantity. Why? It's still early. Tesla looked to me like it's about to reverse again and move higher. I was right this time. This was my successful trade in Tesla. And at that point, it was still rather early. The market was touching new highs, bouncing back, trying to move higher again. Look to me, it's going to continue. It did continue, but a bit later. And anyway, at that point, Tesla was again a bit late to respond. But uh, as you can see, once Tesla moved under the lows, the market kept to the highs, really. It was right over here. You see, that, that was the point. If you take a look at uh, the point where Tesla was under the lows, it was 940. Now, if you take a look at what happened here at 940, that was right over here. The market was touching new high. Tesla had no business coming down there. <laughs> really, seriously, it had no business going down unless something exceptional would have happened to Tesla. Well, I was looking at Tesla and I, I couldn't believe that Tesla came down. And I, I did think maybe it was just, you know, one big seller, several big sellers, of course, in Tesla, it's just not one big seller. They, just one big seller probably couldn't drive Tesla down. But anyway, I was thinking, well, it's exaggerated, it's too much. The market was keeping to the highs. And well, I saw this reversal and I felt like, well, Tesla is very, very likely to move up and move over the highs. I took uh, a great trade in Tesla, which was much better than the, the losing trade I had here. So I was nicely green in Tesla after two trades. So at that point, I was green in Tesla. Then came my third trade. Now, I can argue about my third trade. In fact, I want to argue about my, my third trade. I want to think a little bit with you about what happened right there because that's a little bit more tricky. Now, what happened there, it, first, first it was a little bit uh, later. So you see that the market was moving sideways. Then the market decided that it wants, to move, uh, it wants to move higher. Look at this area over here somewhere after, um, uh, that's at around 10.15. You see that area 1015. That was the point where I moved into Tesla once more at around this point. Why the S&P was moving to new highs. Tesla was once again trying to move higher, came over this uh, level over here, looked to me like it's very, very likely to move higher. And the market at that time was moving to new highs. So I did have the support of the market. I thought I could have another trade in Tesla, but I was experienced enough to know that at that point, after having two trades in Tesla today, which is uh, too much, I would say. I mean, normally I don't have more than two trades. I mean, if I would have two trades in a stock, that would be kind of special. Uh, it happens, it happens quite a lot, but I, I, I normally just have one trade in, in a simple I'm trading. Having two is not normal. Having three, you know, when, when you come to the point where you're having a second trade, you need to realize that normally your second trade, which did not happen today to me, gladly, but normally your second trade, your chance to succeed are much lower. So if I would ask you, if I would, uh, if I would ask you, and you're very welcome to write down your percentage uh, rate for the second trade. Uh, if I would ask you, what would be your success rate uh, taking a second trade? Let's say your success rate in taking your first trade is, I don't know, 65%, assuming you're a good trader. What would you guess would be your second trade success rate? I say my first trade, um, my, my success rate, my average success rate is around 68%. If I would have to think about what would be uh, my second trade success rate, it's definitely under 60. Um, I dare say it's over 50 I dare say it's over 50, but it's it's not even close to my to, to, to what I do with my first trade. I mean the same symbol. I'm I'm talking about the same symbol. So I'm looking at your uh, at, at at some of you guys who dare share your opinion. <laughs> so 30% uh, Matt says, and uh, uh, Nevin says under 50%, uh, lower than the first. Uh, Gorgio, yeah. Well, you know, right. So. Anyway, our success rate tra taking, uh, taking the second trade is, 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 is definitely less. Why do we do it? Why do we do it? And I do it. And I do it. First, I believe my second uh, trade is over 
but maybe I'm a little bit more experienced than you guys, okay? Why do I take my second trade? Um, and what should I do about the quantities? That's the topic of our lesson, and we're going to talk about it really soon. So why do I take my second trade? I, I normally take my second trade, well, you say revenge. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons, right. I mean, you know, I had a, I had a losing trade. I, I'm looking at Tesla and I'm, I, I pre-market, I prepare to that trade. I was ready to make money today in Tesla. I was looking at the S&P, the S&P was moving higher, nothing wrong. Uh, Tesla came under the lows. Well, it shouldn't have done that. The S&P is at a new high. Why? What happened there? So I'm over-occupied thinking about Tesla and probably in the back of my mind, I'm looking also for some kind of revenge. Yeah, I mean, definitely I have it in the back of my mind. I would never agree. I would never admit it. <laughs> no way. I'm not going to admit it. But somewhere in the back of my mind, yes, it's, it's right there. You know, uh, one of the sad things about uh, um, traders is that we only have around 7% or so uh, female traders. And you know, female traders don't have this, normally they don't have this issue like uh, men do. Uh, that's one of the advantages of uh, female traders. And I found out that on average, female, uh, female traders are doing better than men. Well, of course, not all of them succeed, but but normally, one of the <laughs> one of the things that uh, they don't have in the back of our mind is revenging a trade. Well, it, I guess they do as well as 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 we do, as men does, but probably a little bit less than men. So they do have some advantages, and that's just one of them. Okay. So now, so I'm thinking about Tesla. I'm. I'm, I'm occupied thinking about Tesla. I'm trying, in a way, to force a second trade. My second trade is something that I'm kind of forcing. I'm trying to see, okay, so what could happen if I take it here or there? And I'm in many cases, I'm just imagining something that is not there. Now, I, I can't say it happened to me today. Well, the fact is my second trade was very successful. So maybe I'm a little bit more experienced, but you need to Keep that in the back of your mind. You need to always think, am I really taking this second trade because I'm trying to revenge my first trade or because I'm over-occupied with Tesla, just watching it too much, which I shouldn't, because there's plenty of fish in the sea. There's so many stocks out there that you can trade. You don't need to, to look at Tesla all day long. So are you over-occupied with the stock you're taking? Are you trying to revenge your first trade or whatever reason? Uh, you know, normally... You don't really have the support of the market and you don't really have the right technical support in the stock that you're trading for the second time, but you do take the trade. And the reason that you are trade, taking the trade is because for the wrong reason, because you, you, you're just watching it too much or you want to revenge it or whatever. And, and that's one of the reasons why your second trade doesn't have the same success rate as your first trade. So what is the solution? If you're just starting out as a trader, the solution, uh, a very simple solution would be just don't take your second trade. Never. Well, if I would have realized, realized that when I started out as a trader, I would probably have a bank account higher at a few hundred thousand dollars. I'm not joking, a few hundred thousand dollars. So right now at that point, if I would have totally eliminated my second trade in the same symbol, when I started out, when, when I say started out, I'm talking about the first five years. I'm not talking about the first few months. I'm talking about several years because I, I, the point where I got to the point, when I got to the point where I believe I had more than 50% doing my second successful trade in the simple, that probably took several years. I'm not sure it was three or four or five, but you will feel uh, when you got when you come to the point where you can trust your second trade, it will take you years. So the best advice I can give you, just don't do your second trade. You shouldn't care if I take my second trade. You should. I to start with, I have a lower percentage. I admit it. So should you take the second trade? Well, I I believe even if I take my second trade, you shouldn't. Definitely don't decide by yourself to take your second trade. And again, if you feel like you're experienced enough, do it. Now, I, I do know a lot of people who are just trading, uh, are, are just one symbol traders. They only trade one symbol. They feel like they know it. So another reason why you take a second or a third or a fourth trade is because you feel like you know the stock. You feel like 
you, 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 uh, we call it get married to a stock. And I have to say, I have to admit that at th- in this point in my life, I feel like I got married to Tesla a little bit. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not married yet, but let's say I'm dating it too much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not dating enough girls anymore. I'm dating Tesla too much. At that point, I'm having a Tesla trade every second or third day or so. I believe like I'm exaggerating in my relationship with Tesla. Uh, I, I, I did have some uh, very bad days uh, recently with Tesla. I had one terrible day. My worst ever trading day uh, happened last month. Last month, just two days ago was March. So at the beginning of March, I, I, I lost 200 something thousand dollars that day. And that was due to the fact that I probably although again i don't admit it i got married to tesla so i felt like i'm having this amazing percentage uh success rate in tesla and i got a little bit cocky a little bit a lot and i had my worst ever trading day well do i still in green in tesla throughout the last year or so absolutely yes it was my favorite trade my still is my favorite trade tesla and, you know, I think I'm still doing well, but I need to reconsider my relationship with Tesla. My relationship with Tesla is just too much close right now. So it needs to be considered again. So anyway, uh, that's one of the reasons why you guys, me too included, are sometimes getting too close, uh, too deep into relationship with a stock. We feel like we know what is it about what it is about to do we feel like we understand it which is totally foolish we don't we normally don't well maybe more than other stocks but but definitely uh that, that, that feeling that we understand it is to start with very bad because we 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 when we start thinking about what, what, what's going to happen, we, we, we make excuses to go long or to go short. And, and we feel like we know what is about to happen. And we convince ourselves that this is really the fact that the time where Tesla is going to go up or down. And uh, let's say it comes down and we think we need to average down our loss because it's more likely to move higher or whatever. I mean, we convince ourselves that we should do A, B, C, D. And that's why we have what I had last month, a terrible day in Tesla. So because we get carried away, uh, for example, I, I, I was shorting Tesla, is, uh, if I remember correctly, my, my, I do remember correctly, my worst day in, <laughs> in my trading career last month. So I was shorting Tesla as it was uh, trending higher. Definitely, I was looking back and I was saying, I mean, what the hell did I think was happening over there? I just felt like I'm like the, I don't know, the, 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 the Tesla whisperer or whatever I would call it. So anyway, I, I, I took my third Tesla to, trade today. Did I do right? Well, I, there were several reasons why I took my third trade, trade today. One of them was, I'm, so, I'm sorry I have to admit it, I was bored. I was uh, kind of without the trade for several uh, minutes and I was kind of getting bored and there's nothing like a trade in Tesla to, you know, to uh, to make you feel uh, uh, kind of, you know, more active. And so I was looking at Tesla. I did think I'm doing the right thing. If, if we take a look at the point where I, 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 I went long Tesla, again, that was right over here. So that was in right technical formation. It was. Uh, the market was uh, was uh, at that point was uh, was looking good. I mean, that was 10, 15 or so. That's right over here. The market was at the highs. Tesla was probably, I thought, could challenge the highs once more. And again, Tesla started with the gap up. It is at that point uh, trending higher. So I, it looked to me like the right trade, but taking a third trade in Tesla, probably because I was a little bit bored. I was green at that time. I finished my day in red today, but I was green at that time. Uh, my second trade in Tesla and I had, uh, what did I had as? I can, uh, Microsoft put me in green territory. So I was green at that time and I decided I'm gonna take a, a, a trade in Tesla. Uh, in fact, I took two trades, one in Tesla, one in ZM, both of them um, finished in, in, in red. So um, at that point, I took my trade in Tesla. Now, there's just one thing I did right. And again, that's, uh, that's how I started today. That was my topic of my, the topic of my lesson today. The only right thing I did about taking this Tesla long was the fact that I took it with relatively small size. 
I took it with like a third, I think it was more than a quarter, I think it was third quantity or a third or so. So I, I took Tesla with uh, less size because, well, maybe I was a little bit uh, uh, understanding the situation I was in. Maybe I, I realized that I was a little bit bored. Uh, did I support this trade? Yes, I looked at the technical formation of, the, of Tesla. It looked to me right. I looked at the S&P 500 at the, at the highs. It looked like the right thing. But I was clever enough to add small size. I also mentioned it in the trading room. I told you guys, taking this trade with smaller size, the reason I said that was uh, because I personally realized that I need to reduce my size. My size. And there, there's, a, there's another rule here, which is very, very important. If you have a successful trade, and at that point I was green in Tesla. After two trades, I was green in Tesla because my second trade was much better than my losing first trade. So I was green in Tesla and I calculated where the stop should be in a way that I calculated my size in a way that whatever happens, Tesla would finish in green. And that was the final result. I did finish my day up in Tesla, $5,000, but I was at around $14,000 in green in Tesla earlier after my second trade. So after my second trade, covering my loss, my first trade loss, and then making some money, I was up $14,000. I finished around $5,000. It's on Instagram. I can't remember exactly the number. It was around $5,000. I finished, uh, I, I finished uh, in Tesla uh, in, I'm sorry, after the first trade, I finished in green, $14,000. After the second losing trade, because it, as obviously, as you can see, it started trending lower and I moved out. After my second trade, which was third trade, sorry, which I had a loser, I still finished in Tesla at around $5,000. So I did the calculation. Well, I was really hoping not to uh, go down more than 50% of my profit. So I my target was to stop it at a point where I would lose up to half of my earnings in Tesla. I was up $14,000. I thought, well, if I get to around $7,000, I calculated my, my quantity, I will be out uh, of the Tesla trade. And that's a calcul the, 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 the quantity I took. And sadly, Tesla, my third Tesla trade didn't uh, finish in green. And I did lose a little bit more than I expected. So I came down from $14,000 to $5,000. And since ZM was also a losing trade, then I finished in red. Uh, both of them together that took me back to red territory because I was up after my second Tesla trade. So anyway, the, the thing I wanted to, uh, to emphasize here is the fact that first, if you're just starting out, please don't take your second trade in, in any symbol. Seriously, just don't do it. And uh, second thing, if you do take your second trade or your third trade, as I did, Always think, why are you taking this trade? I mean, just probably have some kind of a, uh, of a list, of a checklist that uh, says, is that a revenge trade? Mark, yes or no? <laughs> is that a, do I have a real technical formation? Yes or no? What's the S&P doing? Is the S&P supporting this trade? Yes or no? Am I losing money in this trade? That's why I'm taking it. Yes or no? Am I, am I, am I like in my... In, 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 Am I, am, I, am I like in my normal senses or whatever? I don't know. Just have a list of things that you want to write down and figure out if you're doing the right thing by taking the second trade. Now I'm talking about the third trade and it's kind of the same as the second trade because it's you, you normally shouldn't take the second trade, but if you do take the second or even the third trade as I took today in Tesla, now, anyway, second or third trade, if you do decide to take it, if, you, if the checklist is all, yes, 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 I'm normal, everything is okay. If, if, if you cut to that point and you're taking the second or the third trade, now think about your size. That's the only clever thing I've done in my, not really, but it, it, it's one of the best things I've done today with Tesla is the fact that I reduced my size dramatically in my third trade. You know, when, when we take our second or third trade, again, we are probably not in the same, uh, um, we're not where we were when we took the, the first trade, as I mentioned, for several reasons. We need to realize that only for that reason, you need to reduce your size. Only for that reason, it's a good idea that you should reduce your size. Only for that reason. Second thing, 
I have a rule. I never risk more than around 50%. Well, I, I do, like today, I risk 66% or so. I did come down a little bit more, but it happens. You, you normally should look for the point where whatever you do with your second trade in a symbol or third, like it happened to me today, you do not risk more than 50% of what you earned in the first trade. So I don't care what your risk reward rules now. How much are you willing to make or lose per trade? What is your risk reward uh, one to one, one to two, and how much um, your maximum loss per day, per trade, whatever. Just look at what you earned in Tesla or whatever trade you took and don't risk more than 50%. You need to realize you are not in your normal senses where you're taking the second trade. You, you are biased. Uh, even if you do not agree with it or you do not admit it, you are biased. You're not the, your normal self at that point. And even if you think you are, you're probably not. And your success rate, you admitted that earlier, some of you admitted that earlier, is not as good as uh, your first trade normally. And there's a very big and important rule that all of you should know. And that's a, a very important rule for traders. If you put some money in your pocket, you never take it out. You just never take it out. Just remember this rule. It, it, it applies per trade, really. It does not apply per trade. It could apply per day, but definitely per trade. If you earn some money in Tesla, you can risk a part of it. You never risk it all. Now, does it happen to me that I sometimes go over this rule? I'm human. Of course I do. If I just look back last, last month, my worst day ever, I, I, I broke several of my rules that day. But if I look back at my trading career, I do less and less mistakes throughout time. So I, I don't do the same number of mistakes I used to. So I'm telling you about a rule that I will probably break myself, but I will not break it as many times as you will, because you're probably just starting out as I started out. You will make more mistakes that I like I did. So remember this rule. You put some money in your pocket, don't take it out. It's, impo it's, 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 it's not legal. You're not supposed to be taking it out. You want to take some of it out? Fine. Don't take it all out. It's the same like averaging down. You put, you, you're risking of taking all of your money. In fact, all of your account. Just don't do that. Just don't do that. I got an email. Uh, not an email. Was it? Uh, no, no. I got a chat today in the trading room. Uh, maybe, maybe one of you guys. I don't remember. I don't remember the name really right now. But he wrote to me um, something that touched touched me. I mean, I, I enjoyed re reading what he wrote. He, he said he was trading a few years before he joined us. And he was always averaging down his losers. And he was normally in red. And once he joined our trading team, uh, he's in our trading room. Maybe it's one of you. I don't know. Uh, he, he stopped losing, but, but just by dropping these bad habits. So he had some bad habits. He realized that once he joined us. And that's exactly what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about you know, throwing these bad habits, uh, uh, adopting habits that will help you. So think about that. You earn something in the stock, the money's in your pocket, don't take it out. Take some of it out, fine. Calculate your, your new risk according to what you earned in Tesla. And I did that. It was not perfect. I wanted to risk just seven grand. I risked a little bit more than that. But uh, end result, I finished in green in Tesla. And I'm, I'm looking back and I'm, I'm kind of proud that I've... Well, I'm not proud that my third trade, but I'm kind of proud that I at least that rule, I kept it and it worked out fine. Because, you know, my, my third trade would, could have been disastrous in Tesla. If I would have done it with my uh, same quantity I did the earlier trades, could have been disastrous. Um, so I guess that's it. So that's the only thing that was my only uh, two cents for the day. So uh, if you have any questions, you probably have already written some. So I'll, I'll, I'll read some of your questions right now and see uh, if there's something there that um, uh, we should continue and talk about. Uh, let's see. If you have any questions, please write them down. Um, yeah, the volume in the opening is very, very important. So it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's always a combination, you know, uh, you take your second trade and you, or you take your third trade, 
it's, it's not just the fact that it's a, uh, maybe a revenge trade. It's also the fact that, you know, stocks are moving less as time goes by. Then you don't have the volume of the opening and everything. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that are playing against you. Uh, it's not just the fact that you are revenge trading. <laughs> okay. Do I still document my trades for feedback? No, I don't. I did it for years. I think it's extremely important, but I think it's extremely important to document your trades, to have, uh, um, to write down your trades, to follow them, to write down what you think was, why was the reason that you lost money? Uh, why did it happen that you made money? What should have you, I mean, write down your remarks from the passing day and everything per trade, per day, and so on. Extremely important tool for you to understand what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Of course, what you're doing wrong is more important than what you're doing right, but both of them are important. This is an extremely important tool. Uh, just that, you know, after 10 years, I stopped doing that. I did it for like 10 years, which was extremely important. And I did that. And I think it was one of the best tools I ever had. Um, well, I, I don't think I did it as, as good as I did it in my first, I don't know, three, four, five years. But I kept writing some remarks afterwards. And then up to around 10 years, I kept writing remarks. I don't do it anymore. Tell you what, the, 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 again, the number of mistakes I do today, I don't really have to write them down. I just I don't do so many, so I kind of remember what I did. The number of mistakes I did when I started out throughout my first years was a lot. I, 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 when you're trading, I'm sure you realize by the end of the day, you can count, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, ten mistakes. On my average day, I can count one. I do count at least one, but I, it's not too many to remember. More questions. Huh. Would you have made uh, Would you have made the Tesla trades if you did not know the name of stock? Uh, good point, Howard. Uh, good point. You know, Tesla is expensive. Uh, it it has a uh, very specific characteristics, um, spread wise. Um, the point where people are jumping on board and pushing it up like what happened when when I took my second trade and so on. So it has special characteristics. I, I don't think I can. Your question is very good if it was not Tesla. For Tesla, it's, it's kind of special, but um, that's a good point. And I think um, the answer is uh, I don't normally take a second trade in a stock if if it's not Tesla. OK, I mean, sometimes when you have a stock that is a big, big mover, I would take my second trade. But if it's Tesla, I feel uh, a little bit better taking my second trade. I think my second trade in Tesla uh, probably has a more than 60 percent success rate compared to other stocks where I have less. But again, I have to be very careful about this conclusion that I just said. How to avoid over trading? Um, you know, it's it's just a matter of discipline. You need to you need to you need to set up a number. Um, you need to set up a number and just decide that you're not going to over trade. I believe uh, there, there were there, there was a long long time. I remember myself where I had a rule that I'm not going to take more than three three trades a day. So. I, I had a rule and and I was trading more than I was trading more than one and a half hour back then. So I, I had a rule I'm not going to take more than three days trade a day. And then I had a rule I'm not going to take more than four. Then I had a rule I'm not going to take more than five. So you just need to set up the number. I believe that if you're starting out um, at the very, very start, you shouldn't take more than two at the very, very start. But then later, probably not more than three. So just set up a rule. It's a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of discipline. Over trading is just pure discipline so there's no rule out there other than you know ask somebody and ask 
somebody to get into your room and put you in handcuffs or something like that. But really, seriously, it's just pure discipline. So I also answered the question of how many trades I took per day. Of course, I had my days where I overtraded and so on, like happens to everyone. You trade too much. Oh, you take a lot of trades in the trading room. Can't you control yourself? Uh, well, I can tell you a story about a guy I met several years ago. Um, he was with us in the trading room for several years. And he met me and he said something like, well, Mayor, I'm trading for three years or so. And I'm constantly losing money and I'm taking every trade in the trading room. I'm taking your trades, Scott's trade, this trade, that trade, every trade in the trade. I heard that and I had a rush. And I'm, I'm feeling the same like what you're saying right now. Um, because, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're starting out as a trader, if you're not making money as a trader, you need to find out what is your, your system. You need to realize what is the system you should be trading according to? You need to come out with your own ideas of what kind of trades do you take. Do you take like uh, gap ups? Do you take gap downs? Uh, do you take gap and goes? Do you take reversals? Do you take breakouts? Uh, and, and within this territory, even if you decide, okay, I take gap ups. Okay, fine. Gap and goes, whatever. If, within this neighborhood, you need to decide exactly what kind of trade you take. Um, so a system should be a very limited to number of trades that you can take. If you just trade all over the place, uh, like this guy who mentioned, I'm taking everyone's trades, then he's trading, this guy's trade, taking trades, which uh, is according to Scott systems, my systems, and other trader systems. He's like mixing up so many systems in together. Look at myself. How many trades do I take that Scott posted in the trading room? And the same for Scott. How many trades does Scott take that I'm posting in the trading room? I mean, if I'm trading, if I, if I would take five trades in the trading room, on average, maybe one of them will be Scott's. Maybe. Why? Because I have my own systems. He has his own systems. He trusts his systems better than he trusts my trades. And that's, that's the way it should be. And when you're trading with us, you need to develop your own trading system up to the point where you no longer take mine or Scott's unless whatever I post falls within your category of your systems and then you take your own trade feeling very good about the trade that you picked uh, be, maybe because I picked it first but but it, it, it is within your territory of, uh, of your, your systems. So you, you just need to go through this. You, you need to go through this. Just, just don't, you know, don't gamble. Just pick up a strategy, uh, develop your system, and, and master it. You, you need to get to the point where you know exactly what you're doing and you're mastering some kind of a system. It's extremely important. I don't know why the S&P did not stay up together or change directions or whatever. Really, I, don't, <laughs> I have no idea. There's a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> well, traders, um, uh, let's summarize it here. Um, this um, mentorship is uh, over now, but let's just summarize it very quickly. First, thank you for being here with me. So I really enjoyed your company. And I hope um, we talked about something that could help you guys. Uh, if I need to summarize this lesson, I would say the following. First, don't take your second trade, same symbol. If you do take your second trade, have a checklist. Make sure you're not doing it for the wrong reason. Uh, I would skip the checklist. I would just suggest don't take the second trade. Seriously, just don't take the second trade. You may see me taking a second trade in the trading room. My the first thing that comes into my mind, that's why I think I'm helpful most of the time in trading is because I trade my own account. If I'm trading my own account the way I think I should trade, then I'm genuinely trading the way I should be trading and I'm not adapting myself to your 
environment. Some, some, some traders complain. They say they think I should trade small quantities, show you the way by trading the same size that you do. I don't. I need to trade the way I believe I should trade. And, that's what, and, and that makes me uh, a better trader. And I believe more, uh, as, as long as you know my quantities and the way that I'm trading, I believe I'm more helpful doing the right thing I'm doing. But if I'm taking the second trade and you're thinking about joining me, taking the second trade, as I just mentioned, you shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't take my second trade and just help you guys, uh, you know, make it easy for you so you will not follow me in my second trade. Well, I think I should do what exactly I should do with my account and the way I trade because I think I'm more helpful this way, building myself as a better trader. But maybe you should have a rule that you shouldn't take a second trade no matter what doesn't matter if I take it or anyone somebody else taking it or you decided by yourself that you should take it if I need to summarize this session I would say this is probably the most important lesson today but then there's another lesson if you have decided if you do have a checklist and you have decided that you uh, uh, mentally uh, right and you're sure that you are fine mentally and uh, do not need to be hospitalized or anything like that and you do decide that you want to take your second trade uh, and you passed your checklist <laughs> hopefully you have one then think about your quantity think about your quantity the, the 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 first thing that should come to your mind if you don't have the time to calculate exactly how much is half quantity start with half quantity start with just half quantity of your first trade so that should be the, the, the first thing that comes into your mind. Now, again, if you're experienced, if you know what you're doing, if you feel like something special happening, there's a lot of if and then that could happen. But taking a second trade should normally not happen. If it does happen, and if you feel like you passed the checklist, uh, definitely lower your size dramatically. You put some money in your pocket, don't take it out be ready to put out, take out only a part of it. And that's it. That's the way I would summarize this lesson. So thank you guys for joining me. Have a great evening. And I'll see you all next week. We've got uh, Good Friday tomorrow. So enjoy your long weekend. And um, uh, hopefully, um, yeah, let's meet next week and uh, do some money together. Thank you guys. Bye.